Hey everyone, it's Nick. Welcome back to the third part of this three-part series. Thank you everyone who's been on this journey so far. I do have to apologize to you though because I do need to preface this video for those random people who have just sort of walked in with the crowd. This video is a three-part series that looks into how Quick Parts works in Microsoft Word and Microsoft Outlook. Now I know that might sound boring from the beginning but it's something I'm really excited about and this is for me the most exciting part because this is where we learn how to do a bit of scripting and coding and it'll basically make you feel like Mr. Robot. I hate when I can't hold in my loneliness. This crying's been happening too often every other week now. What do normal people do when they get this sad? They reach out to friends or family, I think. That's not an option. I mean, hopefully from like a technical point of view, not from an emotional point of view, that'd be, that'd be a little bit devastating. Backup server up and running. It's ready, but it's not configured for auto switch. Need to redirect the traffic, need to switch DNS. Got this, you got this, you got this. Anyway, this is the third and final part. So before we dive into the technicality of writing a script, we're just going to do a real quick refresher on what quick parts are. They're a template that you create in Word and Outlook and they're saved on your PC. More specifically, they're saved in a folder called Templates, which is located inside the Microsoft folder, inside your roaming folder, inside your app data, inside your profile folder on your C drive. I've explained all of that because that app data folder that I mentioned is sometimes hidden from your user view depending on how your folders have been set up. So a faster way of finding it is to open a file explorer, click into the address bar and type in percentage app data percentage and hit enter. Then you can find the Microsoft folder and the templates folder that I mentioned before. And here they are. If you've been following the series so far, you'll have a fully edited and modified normal and normal email.dotm file, which also that you're using to great effect. Your productivity and accuracy with emails is up, you're reducing risk, and all around you're just having a real good time. But little Timmy who sits a booth over from you, he's not having a good time. He's struggling to find his email templates, he's forgetting to update fields in those email templates when he does find them, and he's getting less replies from people because when he sends an email to them they think they've received it in error. Or that he's just an idiot. He tried to get this quick parts thing working that you've been so successful with, but it just wasn't his jam. How can we help Timmy out with access to all of the great things that you've been taking advantage of with your quick parts file? The answer comes back to this file located in your app data folder directory. Timmy has the exact same folder structure on his PC, so if you can get this file on your PC into his folder location, then he can be just as happy and productive as you are. Hopefully your mind's already ticking over <laughs> ways that you can get that file from your computer to his computer. I've gone through the exact same journey as you and I have a tried and tested way of doing it that's both simple and easy. So the same thing. Before I give you the solution however, you might just be asking why is this important? So let's explore that first and I'll harken back again to my days in the ticketing industry. In those days I worked with one committed individual who wanted to use Quick Parts to make our email reply process easier. So she went through the process of making all the responses that we would ever possibly want and put them into a Word document, and then emailed that document to the five or so staff members who would be using them, and then dictated them to go through what we saw in part two of this series to save them into their individual PCs. The trouble began like this. Some of us just didn't see the value of saving all of the quick parts and only use the really big ones that we'd be using all the time, and for the little minute ones we just decided we'd write them if, if and when they came up. The second issue was that because she was giving them to us to save manually, we were using different naming conventions. So when she had return policy, I saved it as return process. So on her PC, she'd type in return policy and pull up the same data I would pull up by typing in return process. This means that when we were having conversations about which quick part to use, we were using different language and getting ourselves confused. It doesn't seem like too much of a big deal, right? Generally, you can work out what one or the other person means when you're having a conversation, but let's chuck this element into the process. Six months down the track, we decide that we are writing the same email to the customers to tell them that the return has been processed. And it's constantly the same thing. The return has been processed, expect the refund within 5-10 to 10 working days, have a nice day. So instead of typing that manually, this person who's really keen to get everything quick parted creates a quick part which is called return processed. So she rolls out this new return processed quick part, tells me to save it into my computer, I see the value in it, and save it as return processed. Unaware of the danger that return processed will be returned when I try to type return process to a customer, then I look like an idiot because a customer asking me to return their tickets has just been told that we've refunded them. 
therein lies the danger. If I'm not careful and I don't notice the inconsistency, I could end up telling a customer that we've refunded their tickets when in fact we're trying to get their tickets back to refund them. So there is the danger, the risk, and the reason why you want to have the exact same naming conventions for everybody using Quick Parts so that when they have a conversation and they're deciding which ones to use in a certain scenario, they can use the right one, they can put it into process documentation, and there's no crossover or danger of somebody sending the wrong template. So hopefully this little example has shown you the importance of making Quick Parts exportable so that everybody can be on the same page and avoid being in the danger that we once had uh, over a decade ago in my old job. Exporting Quick Parts is far, far simpler. What you will need before we can start doing this however is a central shared drive. You can use a USB stick if you want. I wouldn't recommend this because it causes further problems down the line and I will explain that as we come to them to the disadvantage of everyone who's working through this step by step and is starting with a USB drive, uh, but we will address that at the end of this video. The other things you'll need access to is a notepad document and that's it. What we're going to do with these tools is first of all we're going to use that central network to create a new folder location to save all of our master templates from Quick Parts. That's the normal.dotm and the normal email.dotm files. These are loaded up with all of our cool and unique Quick Parts and we're going to move them from our PC over to this new shared network and then we're going to get to work on the really cool scripting part of it which will help deliver that new updates to all of your other users so that they can all reap the benefits. Okay, so let's start with the folder location. Create a subfolder in either your shared drive or on a USB drive. If you're creating quick parts that aren't relevant for your whole business or just a specific department, you might want to consider placing this folder in a location specific to that department. Let's start by calling this folder quick parts. In this folder, create another new folder and call it templates. Perfect. Now let's go back to your app data folder and into your Microsoft and then the templates folder on your PC. Highlight and make a copy of the normal and normal email.dotm files and then go back to the new folder that you created under quick parts and then under templates and paste those master copies there. We're saving them under the templates folder so that they're always nicely tucked away there and staying away from the main view when people enter this quick parts folder. Now click the start menu and open a new notepad document. Here's where it starts to get really fun. Now what I'll do in this segment is I'll actually tell you line for line what every line of code is that you need for this to work successfully and then we'll revisit each line and I'll explain what the function of that code is so you know why we're putting it in there. Also for any master coders out there who are watching this for whatever reason, I am self-taught, so if I'm doing something drastically wrong with this code, please let me know and then we can work together to make it better and make it more relevant. But also I've been using this code for the past six years, or variants of it, um, with very little disruption or uh, no real major issues, so you know, maybe don't be so pretentious with all your cool coding knowledge and just sit back and let me have a go at it, okay? Alright, so the first line should read task kill slash f slash I am space outlook.exe. A fall of this looks really daunting right now. Don't panic. I'm going to keep a, um, a template of this, this script and a link down below so you can always scroll down at the end and just download that and use that. Once you've typed that first line, hit enter to make a new line. In the second line, it should say task kill slash f slash I am winword.exe. Next you're going to need to go to the templates folder in the quick parts folder where you pasted your master copy of the normal and normal email.dotm files. Click on the address bar and copy the file path either by selecting Ctrl plus C or right clicking and copying. Whatever, it doesn't matter what your preference is, okay, we're not going to judge you. This gap doesn't do anything from a scripting point of view so don't worry too much about it, it's more to break it up so that you can easily digest what each part of the code does. On this new line type robocopy space and then type a double opening quote mark and paste the file path for the templates here. Then type a closing double quotation mark to end that part. Hit spacebar then jump back into your app data folder on your PC, jump into the Microsoft folder and then the template subfolder under that. Once you're in this folder select the address bar and copy this different file path. Then go back to your script and notepad and paste it here without the parentheses. Is that what called, the parentheses, the quotation marks? Without those things. Hit the spacebar one more time and then type normal.dotm. Then select that entire line of code that you've just made and copy it. Make a new line, paste it, and just change normal.dotm to normal email 
.dotm, and then your basic script is right there. What exactly does it do, you ask? Well, that part is the exciting part. Line 1 and 2, task kill. This systematically closes Outlook and Word. The reason for this is because if Outlook and Word are open, then they're reading the files that you're trying to update, and if you run the script, it'll just keep resetting itself every 30 seconds to try and run itself again until it can actually update the files, and it will never be able to do that while those programs are open. So these two lines kill those programs so the user can receive the update. The downside of this is that if the user is halfway through typing an important email or a document, they will disappear and the option to save before closing doesn't appear when this task kill script is used so might be a bit awkward explaining to them after the fact uh, so just with your communications when you're rolling this thing out make sure you tell people that they need to have all their work closed before they proceed the third line of the instruction tells the script to dive into the shared drive and copy the normal.dotm file from that location and then paste it or robocopy it into your app data location on your unique PC. So for you, you've just copied and pasted it there into the shared drive, but for a new user, it's going to take that shared drive file, a master copy, and paste it into their unique location on their PC. I'm hoping that there's some sort of diagram to explain all this, because saying it out loud just sounds ridiculous. Line 4 does the exact same thing as line 3, but it does it for the Outlook file rather than for the Word file. So this is your script, but it's just sitting in a WordPad document. It doesn't actually do anything yet, so we need to convert this WordPad document into a script file, or otherwise called a BAT or batch file. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. You select file and then save as. And when saving the document, call it something like quick part installer, and then type .bat. Select the quick part folder that you created previously and then hit save so that this batch will be saved into that quick part location and a new user just needs to open up that quick part folder and everything they need is inside. So anyone who has access to this folder can click on the script and this is what happens. And just like that, this new user has the updated version of quick parts that you have spent so long creating uh, and they have instant access to it. So lastly, just to close up, I mentioned before that using a USB drive isn't the best solution, and I'll explain a little bit more as to why that is now. You'll notice that when you insert a USB drive, it gets assigned like D drive or something like that. The USB drive letter is randomly assigned when it's inserted into your PC. Most PCs just have a C drive, but some PCs might have a D drive depending on how many actual hard drives they have installed, and then depending on how many other USB devices are connected to it. So for PCs that just have a C drive, when a USB stick is plugged into them, it would automatically default to D drive. But if somebody has two separate hard drives pre-installed on the computer, then the when the USB drive is installed, it picks the next letter in the chain. So instead of D, it becomes an E drive. So if you're using a USB stick that has the quick part script in it, and you plug it in, but the computer you're plugging it into already has another drive installed, or as another example, the user has uh, their cell phone plugged in and charging, it might automatically pick up the next designation for the drive letter. The problem that this causes is that the script that you created has a file path that is specific to a drive letter. On a shared network, that drive letter is going to be the same for all PCs on that network, but with a USB drive, it will randomly pick whatever is the next one available, which means that if you do have a PC with multiple drives available, it's going to break that script. That script won't be able to pick up the file path of where your uh, normal.dotm and normal email.dotm files are located, and it won't do anything at all. So this is why I'm saying if you have a shared drive, a shared network drive, it's the preferred option to use. Um, I've worked in several different industries and they haven't really had a problem with me creating a script and putting it in the shared drive, so I think you should be fine to get around that. But if you have to use a USB stick for whatever reason, uh, then you just have to be open to the idea of jumping in and editing the script, which you can do by right clicking on the batch file and clicking edit. It'll open it up in a notepad and then you can just type over with the new letter of the drive. That gets a bit technical. The other option that you can do as well, and this was always obviously an option from the start, is you can just get the normal.dotm and the normal email.dotm files and just manually drag them over. That's why we don't do that. And then just manually drag them over onto the new user's PC and drop them into their app data, Microsoft roaming folder directory, and then just select to overwrite the existing ones. 
The reason why I don't recommend doing this option as well is because I've had users do it the wrong way around and use their native um, blank quick parts and overwrite the only copy that I had uh, in my shared drive. So the other thing that I'll recommend doing as well is create a backup folder somewhere else in that quick parts file and just systematically update it. You know, every time you do an update and you've tested it and it works fine, just copy it over there so you've got yourself a nice backup. So that's kind of the with the breadth of everything I know about quick parts and uh, a quick three part series for you. Really hope that this has been enlightening for some of you and that you take something away from this. Maybe the script was something that you can use elsewhere in your business or in your personal life. I just recommend jumping in there, having a go at it and uh, being prepared for it to blow up and then fix again because that's always the best way to learn about stuff and that's certainly how I got here today sitting in front of this camera. As I said in my last video, if you have questions, jump down to the comment section down below. I love answering them. Uh, suggestions as well, might make a part four if somebody comes up with something better than what I'm doing here. But until then, um, I've been Unoriginic. Thank you very much for watching the series and um, yeah, click like if you've found this helpful. I never say that stuff. Feels weird saying that. Uh, I'm going now. Catch you later. And then we get the same scenario.